Are you serious? There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. I'm Marcus Bronzy. I'm Funk Butcher. Boy. Boy, boy, boy. There's a website I found, Funk. This is my killer bit this week. We've had a few episodes where it's been like, uh, buy this, do this. This is a great free one. You can check out. We've mm. put the link in the show description. Mm. There's a website called nine eyes.com. So like the number nine mm-hmm. dash then eyes is in E Y E S dot com. Okay. And it's this guy that basically scours Google images on Google Maps mm-hmm. for really interesting pictures. Mm-hmm. So he's found like pictures of riots that are like kicking off or like people running away from someone. Uh a woman dragging another woman by her hair down the street. Really? Um somebody catching somebody. Uh-huh weird glitches where it looks like there's two people um people skipping skipping ro- like loads of wi- someone just sitting on the floor in the middle of the road he's like all these weird pictures yeah uh some of them are quite arty, arty farty as well like he'll, he'll pick up pictures that just look really scenic from google maps as yeah, well yeah and it's one of those websites where the more you look at the pictures the more you're kind of drawn into the pictures yeah do you know what i mean so it's like some of the stuff that he finds looks just so artistic. So there, for example, like there's uh, a, tr- uh, a sunset glaring mm. through trees that, and it looks like a professionally taken yeah, photo, but yeah. he's literally just whipped it off Google Maps. Or there's like a photo with someone about to throw something at the car. Yeah. Like some thug trying to throw something at the and car. And these are all images from the Google Im- yeah. Google Maps, the Google satellite. Maps satellite. Yeah. But when you go into street mode, yeah. street, yeah. street, street view mode, but he doesn't, let you know where the pictures were taken. So I don't know if Google, how Google can find them, maybe reverse image search, but okay. you don't know where they're taken. Yeah. So there's like loads of pictures that are really interesting. There's like a picture of a, of an officer arresting somebody. Oh wow. And they're in the back of a truck and the officer's got a gun. It just looks, I'm just like, bro, what has gone on here? Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Nine eyes, nine dash eyes.com. Mm. Wicked. It's like a Tumblr page. You turn to a website. Bit of a weird one though, isn't it? But yeah. hey, uh, in the show description, there is a link to that. Also played an app called Office Quest. Okay. Free download, freemium, so you can pay if you want some more. Yes, sir. Not all, ro- or not all heroes wear capes. Some wear fluffy onesies. Office Quest is a weird game, but I like it. It's about this gentleman, unnamed, who works in an office, and it's kind of like something catches his eye, mm. a colourful plant, yeah. and he has to get, and he's trying to follow it and see where it goes. Yeah. And it's kind of like a, a click, a point and click adventure yeah. for your iPhone. Yeah where you have to get your character to follow this colourful flower because he lives in this grey world. Okay. And there's like loads of little challenges um, which are basically bosses. The bosses are actual bosses yeah. in levels because yeah. the bosses want to tell him to get back to work but he just wants to follow this little flower. It's a <laughs> trippy game. But you just have to work out how to distract the bosses. So whether yeah. it's like, um, you know, knocking a bee's nest so that bees fly out and like attack the boss or whether you shut off the electricity or make a slippery floor so someone drops. Um, that's how you get around different levels of the game. Weird, trippy game. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I like challenging riddles and puzzles and this is like packed full of super hard ones, like yeah. really hard to, to get through. But it's just like relaxing at the same time, man. It's just yeah. a stupid ass little game. Yeah. Your face is looking at me like, what? It's very much... Like those weird adventure time or... Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a game about sneaking out of the office. And I think we've all felt that feeling where we're just like, oh, I just want to get out of here. Like, yeah. And you think, oh, if I just like, you know, pull the fire alarm, then we can just get out of here. Yeah. Like, so it's that sort of game like where all the guy wants to do is just get out. But um, yeah, it's an interesting one I've been killing some time with. Uh, also... They sent us uh, me a Logitech Keys to Go ultra portable standalone keyboard. Okay. Yeah, check this out, Funk. I'll, I'll just throw the keyboard over to Funk. Ultra portable, Funk. Mm-hmm. It's ultra portable. I love the word ultra. I feel like maybe it makes me feel really excited. I don't know. Ultra? Ultra. Is that over- ultra. So, yeah. So, basically, it's a keyboard that's portable. It's Bluetooth. Yep. It's a nice feeling keyboard. You know me, I'm learning to... T- oh, you might not know this. I'm actually learning to type properly. I used to be somebody who used my left index finger and my right index finger yeah. to, to type with, and I was very slow. Well, I was all right, actually, but I just wasn't fast enough, so I learned to type properly. Yeah. So keyboard is definitely uh, something that you need to think about when you're trying to type properly and fast. Yeah. But the great thing about this is that it's kind of water-resistant. Mm-hmm. 
connects to your phone via Bluetooth. It's got connects a nice your computer felt, via... felt material. Yeah it's, yeah, it's got a nice feel to it. And it's got a little stand on it as well. So you can pop your iPad or your iPhone into it and start typing. So I know okay. people that are on the go that are like journalists, they want to type stuff. Yeah. Uh, they can actually roll with that on an iPad and they can type, type, type away. Mm. So I've used it a little bit. I'm not really somebody who types with my iPad on my iPhone, but I'm somebody who will like sit at a desk on the other side of the room and want to type stuff in. It actually connects to my uh, shield as well, which is pretty sick. My NVIDIA sick. shield, so I can type stuff in. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good keyboard, man. What's the price point? I'll find out now actually for you because uh, I don't know off the top. A million pounds. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bad. You might want to press fast forward by 15 seconds. It's very light, though. It is very light. Yeah. 35 quid at the moment. It's uh, it's on it's on El Amazon. I think you can't argue with that. That's a that's a reasonable price. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, uh, it's, it's a peripheral. Oh, sorry, I lied. 60 quid. Hey! <laughs> Dream seller. 60 quid. Dream seller. 60 quid. I mean, I like it. It's slim durable bluetooth mm. yeah man and they don't say it's waterproof but you know it's got people like typing and on like, on, on like a beach accidentally dropping juice on it and being cool <laughs> you know what's funny i tweeted the other day i saw an advert for the the apple iwatch mm. and it had a kind of like a, a kind of plethora of all these images and all these probably paid actors using the iWatch in all the different circumstances you know it and one of the people one of the people in the advert was swimming and then underneath it says only to be used in shallow water <laughs> <laughs> I was like what I love or, that I love that am I going to be swimming in a puddle or you know what I mean so mm, mm. that level of false advertising it was it was quite uh, conflicting I love someone's it. swimming in some like 100 metres and uh, yeah but apparently the watch um, it's not suitable for those conditions. So dread. Yeah. But yeah. So, so, is this, so this isn't waterproof. Well, on I, the advert, somebody pours a juice on it, but I can't see the words waterproof. Okay. So I'm I'm going to go water resistant. Yeah. So it could, Just to be on I would, the safe I would side, try yeah. and type underwater. Like, why would you want to type underwater anyway? Yeah. Who knows? Who does that? I mean, people take pictures of the water now these days anyway. So anything Tweet goes. underwater. Exactly. Fair enough. But yeah, man, it's, it's helping me with my typing game. It's light. Uh, sort of thing I'd say you can roll with your iPad and that and you're not you're good to go yeah if you're, if you're a, a journalistical type of person yes clark kent would be using this mm, indeed so funk facebook live mm -hmm. is a i think it's a great thing it's mm -hmm. interesting for people to like live broadcast stuff but there's like a weird part of it like with all parts of the internet there's weird abuses of it and like people have been live streaming weird things like people killing each other mm. and themselves and like mm. people have been criticizing facebook for not responding quickly enough for example when a man was shot dead in cleveland and a baby was killed in thailand mm -hmm. now what mark zuckerberg has said there's they're working to make live videos easier to report um to take videos down if somebody puts something up that's inappropriate or to have people that are constantly well now they're actually going to employ people like i think they've got 4500 people to yeah. identifying content like crimes and stuff yeah. but apparently they're going to be employing more people to actually monitor live videos to get yeah. to get like the wrong ones off yeah is this what we're going to have to just deal with now moving forward is people can put whatever they want online it's just that who can get it down quicker the fpd is on the case the facebook police department mm. um yeah I think once you kind of create a, um, you set a precedent of live streaming an event where people can become famous overnight, then it is uh, unfortunately going to be um, um, manipulated and abused yeah. and whatnot. And I guess it kind of falls into that that category of a, a classic film. Um, with I think it's Woody Harrelson, yeah, and Juliette Lewis called Natural Born Killers, right? And in that film, I think it kind of monitors the story of two sadistic killers, but it 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 looks at the fascination of the media, right? 
following these two killers. Right. Like they were doing some heinous acts, but the camera was on them. And it just, and that film is, is old. I'm talking about 90s. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, very old film, but the concept is still relevant today that with, with these things going on, where no matter how macabre they may appear, mm. the, the audience for them is always there. Yeah. It kind of harks back to the day where there used to be public hangings in this country and public executions in this country and the, the, like people like Henry VIII was what was it one of the, the the punishments you could be hung drawn and quartered and it just showed that even at that time there was a, a natural curiosity and fascination to watch these things fast forward some 500 years or whatnot and now it's just the same thing online and people are kind of tapping it and watching it and following it so yeah, I still think we're, we're very similar, aren't we? In the way that we watch like bo- yeah, boxing is yeah, like the same yeah, as watching gladiators yeah, fight. Yeah. Really, there is a natural fascination for violence and 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 things that you're not likely to see. Yeah, uh, in in any kind of horror film or whatnot, or or, or just maybe the fact that you what your the 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 voyeuristic yeah um, qualities of society, but leaving that open and just as a means of uh, freedom of speech mm. is too much sometimes you, you do need to limit the, the the liberties of public which is a shame but it has to be done because so should we get rid of live then do you think that could be a possibility where they just say look governments or whatever it was they look we just can't nah well the thing is this is this is the interesting thing there's no such thing as live TV, really. Mm. I mean, t- live TV is there's a lapse, there's a time lapse on it. Yeah. So there is that's the problem. This is actual live. Yeah, unedited. Unedited. It doesn't go through any kind of fil- filter or or checks and balances. So maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe you could have live, but live in the in the TV capacity, whereby there's a delay of I don't know, maybe fifteen, twenty minutes, where it goes through mm. some sort of then you lose you lose that kind of direct interaction though, don't you? It's a shame. Yeah, true. Boy, I just don't know why we're such weirdos as humans. Like, we like such disgusting stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, bruv, I'm not down with watching videos of people killing themselves, mm-hmm. but there's, like, clearly a market for it. I've got yeah. a mate at uni who used to, like, he used to go to some website and he used to go, come, come, look at this. I'd be like, nah. And he'd be like, no, no, all right, I know you don't like the videos, but look, and it'd be like, I'm sorry, you're, you've, you've, overdone your quota of video watching for today come back tomorrow yeah i was like what is that snuff videos he bruv the lot like mm. the lot i think he said he started off with like bear versus man yeah with, like one of those videos yeah. and he said he just went deeper and deeper into it yeah i'm not down with that yeah. man that's the dark web it's the dark web but then again we do watch horror films that are very realistic now so what's the if they're so hyper real and they're almost you couldn't distinguish it from a real life situation does that mean that we're kind of buying into this sort of sick thing anyway? Like, Well, that's the problem. Where I think people are watching the real stuff and because the wiring of their brain has kind of been mangled, as it were, yeah. they can't... That, what, is, what usually should have shocked them and, and be like, oh, this is, this is, this is terrible. I, I have to switch off. They, they're continuing to watch it because I guess they sensory... On a, on a sensory level, they can't um, differentiate between what is real and and What's fiction. That, yeah, yeah. Oh, I find it. I find it weird, man. Yeah. I, I'm, I think, I think I'm, this I'm is, the other way. I'm like, I find it too real. Yeah, and I think this is Mark's Mark Zuckerberg's attempt to not get himself down. A a place where he can get himself into some real trouble. Yeah, he's already he's already said no to kind of having the government and all that kind of prying and yeah. and, and and sifting through his data. If he kind of sanctions this, he's going to get himself into real trouble on his brand. So yeah, I guess for me, this is this is kind of appeasing the powers that be because mm. you can't have because what it would what it's going to get to is you're going to have. I don't know, US soldiers um, executed on Facebook Live mm. kind of thing. Like the Facebook platform would be the bed for these kind of acts. 
Yeah. And then obviously that would put any kind of broadcaster in trouble. Uh, yeah, man. It's like the great thing about the internet is also the worst thing about it sometimes mm-hmm. as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The fact that you can find anything is great. Like, yeah. But then if you... You can also put anything up there. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing we're going to have to keep our eye on, man. Yeah. Jeez. Anyway, on that light note, there's <laughs> plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Funk Butcher. Stay blessed.